Hello. This feels really like weird and old timey. Like I almost feel a little sick at how old timey this feels. Like the whole sitting down, opening up about stuff going on in one's life. I'll try to make this as concise as I can. It's more so for my own validation's sake and like affirming it to myself. I feel that my growth in the past few years i faced a lot of resistance purely from myself and the expectations for how i should be although i was always very like it's kind of surface level i was thinking to myself i will allow myself to do whatever makes me happy whatever that looks like i've struggled with a lot of internalized transphobia and just internalized shame and internalized prejudice just in general that's something that i've come to realize after not wanting to address it for a very long time because I just repressed the parts of me that I felt shameful about until I couldn't do that anymore because it was so hindering and painful. This is a very joyful video, like the message is quite joyful but I have just, oh, it feels so old timey because I've just been like on my guitar and then I like sit down for a YouTube video and it's so heartfelt. I'm like, hey guys, and it's late at night, which is exactly what I do at like 16. Funny how things come full circle. Anyway, what I'm saying, <laughs> I have had a lot of shame for a very long time about certain parts of myself that didn't fit what I thought that I should be. I feel like I started on a journey of self-discovery and then I was kind of pulled into this stream of, of people kind of feeling the same way or like close to feeling the same way and then instead of it purely being about self-discovery it was kind of like it's more so about following that stream to some extent and I did discover a lot of things about myself that were very accurate. I am very proud of my body and I'm very proud of what I've been through. This is the first time I actually love my body in my whole life and I mean that like not just related to dysphoria but like just kind of growing up and becoming more relaxed with my body, relaxed with things that I see as imperfections, relaxed with things that my body might prevent me from doing that other people seem to be able to do easily. I would not have the confidence and the self-awareness to want to unfold myself in the way that I do now had I not been through that. I feel that that is a very important part of me, a very fundamental part of me, but I look back at times where I presented as a guy and I just feel like I need to let go. Um, and it sucks because he's so cute. <laughs> and I didn't feel it at the time, but looking back now, I'm like, wow, damn, he's so cute. I look at other like trans masculine friends of mine now and I feel a bit like, did I fail? Like they've all turned into such like handsome masculine men. And I do a lot of comparison and I'm like, Jesus Christ, did I fail as a trans man? Because I'm not that, I'm kind of this blob in between, you know? Um, but I think the distinction is that I'm not that. Uh, and I don't feel like it right now, maybe I will in the future, but I feel that looking back now at me at the height of like my dysphoria days, it's difficult but because dysphoria is very valid, but I feel that a lot of mine was caused by, you know, okay, I want to be more masculine. So masculinity means man. So I have to do all that I can to obtain being a man or a guy, whatever, like a binary guy. And the parts of myself that make me not fall under that category or that I find comes short in my view of that ideal, that's what gave me dysphoria. And I look back at that time now, it hurts because I feel like Still, there's a part of me that feels like that's the way I should have done, or gone, I mean, and that that's, like, attractive. It's definitely more conventionally attractive than, you know, being in between. But I look at that and I feel that I was limiting myself so much. I did what I could do at the time. It was just part of my journey. Like, I don't even know how else to put it, because 
it's not about reverting to like an earlier stage. It's this continuous growth and you will never be the same thing twice. And you will also never be the same thing for your whole life. And that shows itself in different aspects. For some people, it shows itself in like masculinity and femininity and stuff. But I know that for me, I feel that I have outgrown the term trans guy. I want to be as aware of that as I can now because it's a new year <laughs> and I feel like now's kind of the time to tackle it and be honest with myself. Like now, as we're looking to a new year, it gives me more motivation to do that. And I feel that the term trans guy doesn't hold space for me to explore the parts of myself that I want to explore. And I know that it's just a made up word, you know, guys can be feminine and all of that kind of stuff, but it's not really about that. It's, it goes deeper than that to me. It's about re-exploring things that, you know, my mom and my grandmother have passed down to me and things that I've taken with me through life from my childhood. And I did reject that for a very long time, but I am tired of like running away from one thing while constantly trying to like stretch myself to reach another thing, which is what I felt that I did for a long time. I was trying to suppress and run away from me being a girl and I was trying to run towards and reach me being a guy and the ideal that I made for myself and what that looked like. And now I just kind of want to embrace it all. <laughs> like I'm... I'm all of those things and that's my experience. But uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't think, I think that I find it very limiting. I feel like as long as I wear that label, it, I feel like it limits what I allow myself to do because it just feeds my idea of like, I can't do this, which isn't true because it's all made up. If I had to choose one thing, I think that I just identify with genderqueer. And it's not for any particular reason other than, like, I am queer. <laughs> my gender and my sexuality and my lived experience, all of it is queer. I don't know, I feel like that's what best describes it, and I feel like that's a label that very much uh, opens up, <laughs> you know, for lots of different kinds of exploring. Not that you should be reliant on labels to do that, you should be able to do that anyway, but I just feel like, for me, it feels validating and it feels like that extra push to, like, be brave and to do it. This wasn't as much to like tell the internet as it was for me to kind of address it and make it make sense to me, which I also could have done in a journal, but maybe I'm just too lazy to write. I don't know what else to say in addition to that really. I still go by he, him pronouns though, um, and go by the name Kovu. I'm not really changing any of that. Like it's, it's not about changing anything now other than like embracing who I am. Actually, there is one thing that I forgot to say. As of December 31st, I am taking a break from testosterone to see how I feel. And it's not to do with like me wanting to revert the changes. Uh, it has to do with hair loss. So I, I have been experiencing some like changes uh, at the front of my head. I've always had like a forehead that's quite big, right? Like a five head. So it's set back a bit far. Uh, and it's always been like that. And I've always had very fine Nordic hair. And I have been experiencing some changes that I'm not really vibing with the direction it's going. I'm sorry if that's shallow, but it's honest. Like I'd like to keep my hair if I can. And I'm in a position where technically I could decide not to lose my hair. So, uh, but I'm, I'm going to see how I feel off of it if I feel okay not being on it. If I feel really dysphoric, I'm gonna go back on it and I'll look for a different solution. But right now that just kind of feels like the easiest because I've been on testosterone since February 7th, 2018. And I was 16 when I started. I am now 22. Um, and I feel like I've been on it for a good six years. I feel that I've gotten a lot of changes that I'm very happy with. Uh, obviously, my voice wouldn't isn't going to revert back. I mean, if I could get a high range, that'd be great uh, for 
music. So yeah, I'm going to see how I feel without it. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't mind my face like looking soft so that I can not be harassed in public if I wear something feminine for safety reasons. That'd be cool. But other than that, I don't want to look like a woman because I'm not one. But I want to keep my hair, so we'll see how that goes. But I still love being a boyfriend. I love being my boyfriend's boy, so uh, I like that. A brother and a son. My parents, in being their son, just see me as a person, which I'm very lucky. Same with my brother and all of my family and friends, and I am very, very blessed. The only thing that's really stopped me from being frank about this is myself. And that is a very privileged position to be in. Like, obviously there are legitimate fears around it, like regarding hate crimes and things like that. But I think that now I see it as like, most of the time for me, where I am in the world, yeah, you may be like harassed by someone or they may say something to you, but it's very rare that hate crimes happen where I live. I would <laughs> rather be myself, be authentic and kind of live in the fear and the pain of repressing myself because what if this happened? Again, I'm not saying that, like, this is the case everywhere in the world, for me, where I am right now, that's the case. Sometimes you have to do that for your safety, which I can definitely imagine scenarios where I would have to do that. It's just kind of something that queer people have to face, uh, especially like not straight passing, not cis passing queer people. And I mean, if something were to happen, that would just be another reason for change. You know, I think, I think that's what I wanted to say in this video, so I'm not gonna drag it out more. But I, I mean, if you have any questions, let me know. And I got a perm. Um, I can't show you it without my hat on because I can't shower for three days and the third day is tomorrow. So it looks very gross right now, but I'll show you on Instagram at some point. Uh, anyway, I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you for watching this. And perhaps I shall see you again in not too long. Okay. Goodbye!